are your most welcome to today's update, Friday the 15th of July. Now, new cases of COVID are the highest in the UK now, today, than they have ever been in the entire pandemic. We're setting new records with these Omicron variants. And I strongly suspect that in other parts of the world, such as Europe and the United States, where the data is not as good, that the situation is really quite similar. So in the United Kingdom at the moment, if you think you've got a cold, if you've got common cold symptoms that people tend to call a summer cold, that is most likely to be caused by sars coronavirus 2 than all the other cold respiratory viruses put together at the moment. The majority of what we think are colds are actually COVID, sars coronavirus 2 infections, higher than all the other types of respiratory viruses put together, quite incredibly high at the moment. This Omicron wave just carries on with huge numbers of infections. Thankfully, hospitalisations well, hospitalizations are going up somewhat. They're actually just about the 2,000 per day at the moment, which is round about the level where it starts to become really quite problematic. But hospitals are very stretched anyway with the backlogs and with the the heat wave in the UK at the moment. So hospital situation is, is not good. Deaths are probably roughly level. They've been trending down for quite some time. But we'll have a look at a graphic of that in a minute. So let's let's start off with this screen here. So these are the new cases from the COVID Symptom Tracker uh, app. So we see that, what, more than four and a half million people currently symptomatic. Um, now, of course, this is just people that are symptomatic. So if there's 350,000 new cases per day, uh, presenting with symptoms. I think we can assume there's at least another 100,000 per day who are not presenting with symptoms. So we're probably we're probably in the getting on for half a million new cases per day at the moment. It's really quite incredible. Very, very high levels. And there's there's no reason to suspect that this is not the same in the United States and other areas where the data is not as good. So that's the latest from the COVID symptom tracker data. Now, this is the latest from the Office for National Statistics just released today. And it's really quite consistent with what we would expect because we know this is more up to date. This is literally up to the day, whereas this, of course, is a, a, a week, a week or more delayed. But we do see uh, a sharp increase in cases in England and likewise in Scotland. Scotland, actually, the dots are getting a little close together now. Scotland has been ahead. Uh, it's had more infections more quickly. But there's some evidence, not so much from this, but from the COVID symptom tracker data, that uh, cases in Scotland are probably starting to slow down a little bit now, which is fairly good news for England, because I think we'll follow on from that. Uh, so new symptomatic cases getting on for 350,000 per day, plus, as we say, asymptomatic cases, the real number is going to be quite a bit higher in terms of new infections. It's an all time record, 28 percent increase in the past two weeks. The Office for National Statistics data is actually showing an even higher increase than this, a more rapid increase than this. Now, the R value from, from the ZOE data, which is, which is good, is about 1.1. So in other words, this is still increasing. So we can say with some level of confidence, if the R value is 1.1, that this will carry on increasing for another week and possibly another two weeks. Uh, I would say certainly another week um, because we still have a, an exponential increase from the R value of being over one. Um, Scotland, uh, Scotland and Wales, the numbers went up first. Now England is going up as well. Uh, prevalence, as we said, over four and a half million people at the moment. In the UK today, 15th of July, one in 15 people has symptomatic covid now, thankfully, many of them think they've just got a cold. Well, thankfully, in that they're not very ill, but uh, not thankfully, and it means they won't know to avoid uh, spreading it to people. So if you've got a cold at the moment in the UK, remember, it's more probable to be COVID than anything else. And um, te test if possible, but if not really, assume that it is, it is COVID, because it's more likely to be. Scotland, it's one in 13 um, people currently symptomatic and as we say we can add to this the asymptomatics in both countries really very very high levels now the office of national statistics uh, just released up-to-date data today friday uh, and it's really quite comparable given that it's a week out of date 5.27 uh, percent so one in 19 in england 
one in 17 in Wales, one in 17 in Northern Ireland and uh, Scotland, one in 16 people. So that's Office for National Statistics data. So really very, very high, very, very high prevalence, surprisingly high prevalence. We didn't expect this. Um, I don't think anyone expected a graph that looked like this, but this is what we've got. And um, yeah, you can, you can tell I'm surprised by how high it is. It's just incredible. It's not, it's, uh, and, and, and that, that snigger was more incredulity than anything else. Um, Scotland's starting to level off a bit now. So if Scotland's starting to level off already, um, that's pretty encouraging. Now, we do see that a little bit from the uh, ONS data already there. But we know from the current week that Scotland's starting to level off. Now, if Scotland is starting to level off, that should mean, because they had their infections a bit earlier, that England starts to level off as well. But at a very high level. These are still very, very... So even if it stayed... Even if Scotland stayed at, what was it, one in, one in 13 or one in 16 people, if it stays like that for a few weeks, that's an awful lot of infections. Very high level. So even though the rate of increase is levelling off in Scotland, the numbers remain really, really high. Now, this is for the UK altogether. Children and young adults, one in 10 are currently infected. So 10% um, of, of young people are currently uh, infected symptomatically. And as we say, more will be uh, asymptomatic. Uh, Nought to 17 year olds have got the highest increase, but increasing in all age groups. All UK regions are increasing. Uh, much milder disease on average than it was, thankfully, because of the immunity. Uh, lots of reinfections. Now, most of the reinfections are over three months. But the data is now starting to show that there's more infections in around, around about three months. So people are getting reinfected quickly now. This is probably due to, be, due, due to the varying forms of Omicron that we have. So there's still BA2 around, uh, but BA4, BA5 now most prevalent. And of course, we're watching BA2.75, which may actually take over from BA4 and 5. We, we don't know that yet. We looked at that yesterday. Um, so very, very high. Um, younger people getting more reinfections. So of the younger people that have infections, 30% of those are reinfections. 30% have known they've had the virus before. Older people, 10% are reinfections. They've known to have had the virus before. Um, the, again, real numbers will be higher than that because very often people don't know whether they've had the virus. Hospitalisation is actually just a tad over 2,500, which is... Is, is a problem. Now, given the colossal numbers of people infected, the hospitalizations are remarkably low, but the overall hospital numbers, when we get to 2,000 a day, that does start to cause the NHS some problems, unfortunately. And with this high prevalence, even although it's a very, very small percentage of people that are hospitalized, hospitalizations could remain high for the next few weeks. This is not what we expected in the middle of summer. This virus continues to surprise. Uh, the good news is that most of the people being hospitalised are not dying. Most of them are getting out and recovering well. And if we actually look at the death rates there, so this is from uh, this is this is death rates for 2022. It's basically been going downward trend since Omicron started. This is the BA uh, BA2 spike here, uh, but now with the BA45. Um, becoming more prevalent the rates are going down now this is gray data not yet fully there but okay there's a little bit of a bump there but this general trend is downwards i think that's fair to say this general downward trend trend now what i'm quoting here is is death certificate data because the old metric of people dying within 28 days of a positive test is not too useful anymore really because we're doing such limited testing Whereas the death certificate data is the assessment of the doctor certifying the death. Um, but there again, of course, there's a, there's a bigger delay on that. So I'm optimistic we're not going to get high numbers of, of deaths, but they could remain at this kind of level uh, for a few weeks, unfortunately, as hospitalizations do. So that's basically where we are. No reason to suspect that as we say, other countries where the data is not as good as the UK. We're really lucky in the UK. We've got the COVID symptom tracker data that still a lot of us are filling out. And that is consistent with the Office for National Statistics survey data. 
So we've got these two studies, both working in completely different ways. The ONS data, the ONS data working on uh, tests, actually testing a, a representative sample of the population. The, uh, the, the, the Zoe COVID symptom tracker data, looking at people reporting their symptoms, but a very good deal of, of uh, common ground between the two. Now, mentioning symptoms, let's have a look at the latest here. Now, uh, the, the, the amount of symptoms that people are getting are going down, but this is the latest. So sore throat is now the most common. 58% of people with COVID get a sore throat. 49% get a headache. Blocked nose now 40%. So it was a runny nose that was the problem. That's also 40%. But a blocked nose is now also common as well. Cough with no phlegm. So this is what we traditionally call a, a non-productive cough. So when you're coughing, but you're not bringing anything up. Um, well, that's about 37% of people at the moment. Hoarse voice, 35%. Sneezing, 32%. Um, cough with phlegm, I missed out, 37 So cough, no phlegm, not non-productive cough, 40 uh, Cough with phlegm, 37%. But of course, quite a few of the people that start with a cough with no phlegm may in time develop a cough with phlegm. Runny nose, 40% uh, of people. Hoarse voice, sneezing, fatigue, muscle pains. Uh, dizziness, swollen neck, glands, sore eyes, altered smell, uh, chest pain, 13%, even chest tightness, quite a disconcerting symptom. Fever, only 13% now, shiver or chills, 12%, shortness of breath, 11 earache, 11 and uh, loss of smell, um, 10%. So I will put those on the description below so you've got the latest from uh, Tim Spector and his group on the symptoms so there we are we are breaking records hospitalizations are going up um, symptomatic cases will continue to increase over the next week or two infections from the office for national statistics will continue to increase for the next week or two then we'll see a leveling off then it should start to go down um, so that's where we are at the moment and um, thank you for watching